Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. Today we're on site with Bailey from Cumerit and we're gonna be doing an EV charger installation uh, or more accurately, an EV charger upgrade. Uh, we're at a home here just outside of Los Angeles. They have the, uh, the older model Tesla wall charger. We're gonna be upgrading them to the new model that allows for the power share feature with the Tesla Cybertruck. So Bailey, uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Can you, you kind of walk us through what to expect with this EV charger upgrade? Yes, yeah, so the EV charger upgrade is going to be for uh, the Tesla Universal wall connector, which is what we have here. It's Tesla's Gen 3 wall connector that can be capable of charging uh, Teslas and any other type of EV charger. That's going to be the Nax wand and also the J1772 wand. I'm um, giving you kind of more of a universal charge if you decide to go with Tesla um, or any other e electric vehicle on the road. Um, so the process today is going to be to demo the old work since it wasn't permitted by your local municipality. Um, out here in uh, Manhattan Beach, they do require to run PVC or rigid on the wall due to the moisture and I think like the salt in the air, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, so today we're gonna be running Schedule 80 PVC to the wall to connect your location here. The Schedule 80 PVC uh, holds a lot better up against like the weather and the sun. Uh, if we run Schedule 40, we run a risk of it kind of drooping in between our run. Uh, we want a clean install for our customers. So that's our number one priority. Uh, clean install, make sure everything works and is on and working correctly by the end of the day. Um, so like I was saying before, demo the old work. Uh, once we demo the old work, we'll be running new conduit back to the V3 gateway by Tesla. Uh, that gateway is specifically for the Cybertruck installs and allows uh, backup power. So me and the customer are gonna walk through his panel uh, we're gonna go over his essential loads. And then once we do that, we'll kind of know exactly which circuits are gonna be backed up on this gateway. A lot of the times when we do these V3 gateways, we wanna only have light load backup on it. Um, they can only handle so much of uh, locked running amps and full uh, load amps as well. So we wanna kind of be limited on that. Plus a lot of this stuff is gonna be for like emergency use. If the grid goes down for any like local fires, high winds, or what the case may be, um, the customer is gonna be able to utilize the Cybertruck kind of like a big phone battery. Um, he's gonna be able to see how much it drains at what rate with all the circuits that he has on or whatever he decides to leave off to kind of conserve his battery level. Um, so once the conduit's over there at the gateway and we have our essential loads all picked out, um, what we do then is put up the actual gateway. So now we need to intercept any existing lines that are coming into the panel. However we do that, um, it kind of ranges based off what's going into the panel. If it's Romex, if it's rigid, if it's PVC, EMT, um, it kind of varies a little bit. So we're gonna be installing a type three R gutter. It's a three by six by six box. That's gonna be under our gateway and under our panel. That's gonna allow us to have a lot of room. So we're not gonna be doing it's our, our own separate backup panel. Um, the Gateway V3 actually acts as its own like sub panel. So okay. once the power gets shut down, the Gateway V3 will notice that and I believe it will um, notify the customer on their phone. And okay. then it'll be like, hey, do you want to use your backup with the Cybertruck? You say yes. Um, and then that Gateway will have the essential loads already in there in its own little sub panel and it'll back up those circuits pretty much. Now, how many spaces do we have to work with or how many, what's, what's the most amount of circuits you can move over onto that backup panel? So it's dependent on what we bring over because if we have a 12.3 circuit, we have to have a two pole breaker, right? Okay. Um, if we have a 12.2 or 14.2, we could bring like a, some tandem breakers in and it'll kind of double up what we can do. So I think max what I've put on before, and this was just a lucky day getting all 12.2 and 14.2, um, it was all tandemed up, so we got 12 circuits total with the 60 amp breaker on the uh, gateway as well. Okay. Now, I, I know a lot of homes here in Los Angeles don't use like large central air conditioning units. Uh, where I live back in the East Coast, most homes do have at least one or two of these large compressors. Uh, if they wanted to, in theory, could they run a, an HVAC compressor unit on this critical backup panel, or do you, you try to stick to 120 volt loads only? So the Gateway V3 has a maximum lock running amps of 110 amps. So as long as the AC comes, comes in good on that calculation, um, the Gateway V3 and the Cybertruck can handle that backup load. But we try to veer away from that just so they don't drain their batteries so quick. Um, I mean, those ACs will drain that truck, you know, within a few hours. Mm. So we try to just make it more like essential and more like emergency type stuff, okay. you know, keeping the lights on, fridge running, 
uh, Wi-Fi going. That way they could just kind of do as they need for a long period of time. Okay, so is that the next step then, is, is for you to identify those backup loads with the homeowner? Yeah, that would be the next step. Just identify, going through the house, I'll have Remy there, uh, walk through the house and just pick out what he wants by turning the breaker on and off. I'll put a little mark on it, indicating that we are gonna transfer this over to the D3 gateway. Great, okay, well, let's get to it. All right, uh, what we're gonna be doing is picking all of your essential load circuits. So pretty much stuff that's gonna be um, the best thing for you guys when the power or grid gets shut off. You guys will still have like your lights on, the food will stay cold, or even like your Wi-Fi running. So try to pick stuff that you really want on in an event of like an emergency, um, so you guys stay comfortable in that time frame. Okay. So I'll have Remy go inside. Um, he's gonna pretty much pick whatever ones, or start wherever you guys want. If it's the kitchen or the master bedroom, um, he's gonna follow you around so you guys can kind of know exactly what's gonna be going on in this system. Okay. And I'll let you guys know also like how many we have left um, so you guys don't kind of overload it. Sounds good. Just a quick word from our sponsor, Qmerit. If you're looking to live a more sustainable lifestyle, lower your energy footprint, and become more energy independent, then Qmerit is the home electrification partner for you. Qmerit is our preferred home electrification partner, offering installation of bi-directional EV chargers, smart electrical panels, solar panels, battery storage, generators, and high-efficiency heat pumps. Many of our clients start with solar panels or electric vehicles, then progress to whole home electrification. So if you're serious about becoming energy independent and you want to work with a qualified and trusted partner, then click the link in the description below so that you can learn more about Qmerit and get in touch with an approved installer in your area right away. Okay, so that's going to be a 12-2 circuit. That's good. Okay. And then next in the kitchen, you also wanted the dishwasher. So it's probably dishwasher disposal. This disposal, yeah. um, we have eight spaces left, but that's dependent oh, wow. on if he does any more does. threes. Okay. So just keep rolling through, um, and then we'll, I'll let you know what else we got. Right. All right, Bailey, so so here we are. I got the gateway mounted, got the wall connector mounted and commissioned. So where do we go from here as far as what, what are the next steps for the homeowner? The next steps for the homeowner would be to register the actual device itself. Um, and that's mainly gonna do with the actual gateway. So the Tesla is all commissioned up to the Wi-Fi. Um, it's got 240, 240 volts and it's on a 60 amp circuit. So the, the wall connector is all good, uh, but now it has to communicate to the actual gateway itself. Um, and once the registration process is done through Tesla and the customer, um, Tesla pretty much hand off the gateway to their customer. Um, they kind of give them the wheel on it, uh, saying, hey, you can operate it however you need. And if the grid is off, uh, the Tesla will back feed power into the wall connector here um, and hit all of his critical loads that we picked out earlier. Now we got all the critical loads moved over. Was it was about nine circuits in total? Uh, I believe we ended up doing 10 in total at the end of the day there. 10 yeah. circuits, okay, so that's gonna be protected by the power share. Now, right now, as it, as it stands today, the customer can charge from utility power just like they could previously. Now, you said Tesla has to do some sort of a quality control before they activate power share back into the house? 
Yeah, from what I know, it seems like uh, they want specific pictures about the install. Um, just going over things with them uh, to make sure it's all done up to their specifications. Uh, we do the same thing with their Tesla wall connectors too. We always send in pictures for them to make sure everything is up to NEC code um, and just all good. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. So basically, but all the physical installation is done. So we have a we have a, a 60 amp circuit with a communications cable between the wall connector out to the gateway. And that's enough, that single circuit's enough to, to both feed power to the vehicle and then if once activated, pull power from the cyber truck, power into those 10 critical load circuits that we put into the gateway. Yeah, um, since we only had 10 circuits, we didn't need like a huge heavy load backing it up. Uh, we just did a 100 amp circuit from the 200 amp panel over to the actual gateway itself. Um, it's almost like a little sub panel just with an automatic transfer switch that's gonna sense when the grid is off and when to tell the customer that the grid is off as well on his app. Um, he can then have the option to switch power from the uh, Cybertruck over to the gateway. All right guys, so this has been a walkthrough installing the new Tesla wall connector. Again, this is the device that will allow bi-directional EV charging. So you can charge the Cybertruck from solar or from grid power. You can also pull energy out of the Cybertruck during an emergency and all of those critical circuits that we moved into the gateway will be protected with backup power. Um, as always, folks, if you get a good value from the videos that you see here on the channel, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Uh, also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your recommended videos, and that way you can stay up to date with everything. But I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.